Chapter 27, Kiana Roboni. The first day I'm officially a student in Mr. Kermit's class. Mr. Kermit doesn't even show up. It doesn't bother us at first. It reminds me of the beginning of the year when Ribbit was late every day. It takes a long time to fill up a coffee cup the size of a bathtub. I guess we get a little loud, but when Miss Felton sticks her head into the room, we quiet down in a hurry. She's frowning. Where's Mr. Kermit? We stare back at her blankly. How should we know? We listen to our high heels clicking urgently down the hall. Do you think we're getting a sub? asks Raheem. Please don't let it be dawn of the dead, barnstorm groans. Ten minutes later, we hear running footsteps in the corridor, and Jake Terranova bursts into room 117. Hi, guys. I'm sorry I'm late. Mr. Kermit can't make it today. Are you our sub? Parker asks. Not exactly, he tells us. But since you're coming to the dealership later anyway, Emma, Miss Fountain, Miss Fountain, I mean, well, why bring in a substitute just for a couple hours? Is that legal? Mateo inquires. Technically, Miss Fountain is covering both classes. Think of me as an assistant. You know, a volunteer. Is Mr. Kermit sick? Rahim asks. Nah, Jake shrugs us off. I mean, not really. He just might be upset a little. I jump on that. Upset about what? Jake is flustered. There's obviously something going on that we're not supposed to know about, and Jake has a kind of a face that he can't hide secrets. When you're the boss of a giant car dealership, you don't have to answer questions from your employees, because what you say goes. But that doesn't work with a bunch of kids. It's a science test, isn't it? Aldo says belligerently. I flunk, and now Ribbit won't come to school. Barnstorm cackles. If that's how it went, you'd have been in, in an empty classroom your whole life. Is that it? Elaine rumbles. Did we fail the test? The babble of agitated voices grows louder until Jake waves his arm for quiet. He perches on the edge of the teacher's desk and motions us close. Okay, I'll tell you, but you have to promise not to say anything to her. He motions over his shoulder in the direction of Miss Fountain's room. When he reveals, when he reveals, no, what he reveals turns our blood to ice. Dr. Thaddeus, superintendent of the whole school district, has been out to get Mr. Kermit all year. He found a way to use our scores on the state science assessment to get Ribbit declared an incompetent teacher. He'll be out of a job at the end of this term. I knew it, Aldo rages. We flunked the test. You didn't, Jake insists. None of you did. It's a numbers game. If you fiddle with them enough, you can get them to say something about anything. It's no game, I say bitterly. It's our teacher, and he's getting fired for no reason. Who does that guy Thaddeus think he is, Barnstorm growls. He's like Voldemort and Darth Vader, rolled into one, Matteo adds. Miss Fountain appears in the doorway. Since Mr. Kermit's absent, I thought it would be nice if both classes shared circle time today. She picked the worst possible time for that invitation. Circle time? When our teacher's getting shafted? A chorus of protests begin in our throats, but one that Jake silences by raising one warning finger, because remember, he wasn't supposed to tell. Circle time sounds great, M. Uh, Miss Fountain. J Jake accepts on our behalf. We'll be right there. The last thing we're in the mood for. It, how can the superintendent be so mean? Why would he even want to? Maybe Mr. Kermit is a lousy teacher back in the crossword puzzle era, but now he's the greatest. As we grumble and seethe our way next door to room 115, I sidle up to Jake. How can this be, I ask in distress. I know I got a 96, and if everybody else passed, that shouldn't add up to a failure, no matter how you crunch the numbers. He looks at me sympathetically. You have to understand, Kiana, you weren't registered a student on, that, on test day, so the 96 doesn't count. I stumble into Miss Fountain's room, my mind a pinwheel. The news of the past few minutes has been a bomb blast, but this might be even worse. Our teacher is being fired, and sure, it's the superintendent's fault. It's the school's fault for not supporting Mr. Kermit. It might even be a little bit of Jake's fault for that cheating scandal all so long ago. But mostly, it's my fault. If I was properly registered, Dr. Thaddeus would have to count my score. But no, I was a short-timer. This hick town and hick school had nothing to teach me. I was just passing through. What difference did it make what happened here? Well, it makes a pretty big difference now. By the time we take our seats, the floor around the circle, I feel my head is about to explode. 
A nervous murmur comes from Miss Fountain's students. They can sense the emotional upset that's coming from the seven of us. Vladimir is beeping like a robot in one of Mateo's sci-fi movies, but Aldo is too wound up to respond to his reptilian friend. Miss Fountain addresses the group. Who would like to be the first to contribute to our circle? It comes pouring out of me. It isn't Mr. Kermit's fault that I never registered, and now he's getting fired, and it isn't fair. I got a lot more to say, a lot more, but my words trigger Aldo, who burts out, I hated all the ch teachers until Rivet came, and teachers hated me, but then... Everyone thought I was weird before Mr. Kermit's class and tail bur blurts over him, like I was an android in human form. Rivet's the only person who notices what I'm good at instead of just what I'm bad at, Raheem adds to the clamor. I used to be stupid before Mr. Kermit barks Parker. Nobody ever tried to help me. This school only cared about me when I was scoring touchdown barnstorm blusters, but Ripper's better than that. Even strong, silent Elaine speaks up in her deep voice. I never had any friends until this year. We're all talking at the same time, hollering to make ourselves heard. The seventh graders are really nervous. Vladimir is running crazed loops in his cage because Aldo's upset. He's yelling louder than any of us. His red hair is practically defying gravity. Miss Fountain is trying to restore order, but no one is paying attention, any attention to her. Finally, she inserts both index fingers to her mouth and unleashes, it, unleashes an ear-splitting whistle that threatens to have plaster raining down from the ceiling. It isn't every circle time, but it, it isn't very circle time, but it gets the job done. Silence falls, and we stare at the young teacher in awe. How did such a large noise come from such a small person? Thank you, she says in her quiet self again. Now, where did you guys hear that Mr. Kermit won't be back till the end of the, after the end of the term? Nobody answers, but we all look over in Jake's direction. Miss Fountain glares at him. He shrugs helplessly. It just slipped out. Miss Fountain takes a deep breath. Mr. Terranova, please stay with my group while I take Mr. Kermit's students back to their own room. We've had enough circle time for today. She sweeps us back into room 17. This is so unfair. I'm still shaking with anger. How can they do this to Mr. Kermit? How can they do it to us? Miss Fountain tries to be sympathetic, sympathetic and reasonable. At the same time, I agree with you, Kiana. It's very upsetting, but there's nothing we can do about it. Even Principal Vargas, this is above her level two. It comes straight from the district office. Parker is bitter. Mr. Kermit helped me every, every single one of us. And what do we do to help him back? A big, fat zero. Something stirs in the back of my head. Something I heard a long time ago. Something Miss Fountain said. And then I have it. The science fair! What about it? Barnstorm groans. Haven't we had enough science for one, one lifetime? I turn to Miss Fountain. Remember on the bus ride to Terra Nova Motors when you tried to convince Mr. Kermit to have us enter the science fair? She looks annoyed. That was supposed to be a private conversation. Well, I heard it. You told him the winning team gets 10 points added to all their scores in the science assessment. That would be enough to put us over the top and save Mr. Kermit's job. Suddenly, all eyes are on Miss Fountain, waiting for her answer. I'm sure it would, she says finally. But remember, Mr. Kermit's answer wa wants no one. Mr. Kermit's answer was no to the science fair. Yeah, but that was before he got canned. Barnstorm reasons. That changes everything, right? She shakes her head. Mr. Kermit is a very private person. He wouldn't want you to take his personal problems on yourselves. What if we don't tell him about it? Raheem muses. Be serious, Miss Fountain insists. He's still your teacher until the end of the term. How can you expect to do a science fair project and keep it a secret from him? Terra Nova Motors, I exclaim. I bet Jake will let us work on it there. Miss Fountain, we can do this. I know we can. By now, the others are grouped around me, and we're confronting Miss Fountain as if dar daring her to say no. Entering doesn't mean you're going to win, she reminds us. But not entering means we lose for sure, Mateo counters. It'll be a long shot, the teacher warns. You don't even have a topic yet, and the others have been working for weeks. So it's a yes, I prompt. The teacher, er the cheer that erupts when Miss Fountain nods is loud enough to bring Jake running from the next room. He loves the idea and pledges to do everything he can to help us, courtesy of his de dealership. Rule number one, which Mateo calls Prime De Detective Mr. Kermit, is not allowed to know about our project. If he finds out, the deal is off. We'll up our Terra Nova Motors visits to three afternoons per week. Miss Fountain will come with us if Mr. Kermit will look after her class. We'll work weekends too, whatever it takes. 
After lunch, Jake acts as our chaperone on the minibus over to the dealership. As excited as we are, the ride is somber. With Mr. Kermit's job on the line, the stakes are sky high, and we haven't even started planning yet. Do you really think we can pull this off? Parker asked dubiously. Have you seen the kinds of kids who enter the science fair? They're like, smart. They're different kinds of smart, Jake puts, puts in pro positively. School is important, but there are things you can't learn from books. You mean the internet? Mateo asks. I mean street smarts, Jake explains. I was never the greatest student, but I knew how to scratch and claw and build a business. Trust me, you guys have street marts, smarts coming out of your ears. That's what's going to give you the perfect project. What's the project going to be? Aldo asked. That's what we have to figure out, I say. It can't be too simple because we have to blow the judges away, but we don't have much time either. The science fair is in three weeks. The bus pulls to the dealership service area. We file out onto the pavement. We're about to enter the building when Parker points. Hey, isn't that Mr. Kermit's car? We all look. On a flatbed tow truck parked outside the service base sits the rusted remains of an ancient Chrysler that may have once been blue. Parts are strewn all around. It's also rusted, some bo broken. Jake sighs. Poor guy. Like he doesn't have enough hanging over his head. Now he has to take taxes to school. When is it going to get fixed? Mateo asked. You don't fix something like that, Elaine remarks. You give it a decent burial. Jake nods. I only towed it here to get it out of the school's driveway. It sh seems a shame to waste a whole car, Parker muses. That's no car, Barnstorm retorts. It's a pile of garbage. It was garbage even when Ribbit was still driving it. Have some respect for the dead, I put in morosely. Respect, Jake echoes wanly. Emma says her mom picked out that Chrysler. It's older than she is. Mateo pipes up. You know the part in Harry Potter where Mr. Weasley uses magic to enchant an old car to make it fly? Not now, Mateo, I try to say kindly. We have to come up with a topic for our science fair. Well, that's just it, he insists. The, cards needs, the car needs respect. We need a project. All that's missing is a little magic. <laughs>